Hey everyone, Christopher Beast here, and in today's video I will be covering Armor Reforger's update 0.9.5.66, or the update that arrived on June 7th for Steam and June 8th for Xbox, so I'm nicknaming it the Early June Update. This update featured a large amount of tweaks and bug fixes, focusing on optimizing the experience for players even more so than the previous updates, and really fixing some problems that players had been reporting in the early days of the game. So with no more delay, let's just get right into this. So to start off, let's cover the general gameplay changes. First, to combat spawn killing, there is now a new spawn protection. This will prevent you from dying for the first couple seconds after you spawn by making you impervious to damage. However, it is not long enough for you to be able to use it for any good purpose besides repositioning the safety after spawning. This is a good addition and should generally make you not have to be stuck in the redeploy menu only to spawn in the middle of a firefight and die and immediately be sent back. But it also will not make too much of a headache for players who just want to push an objective and the enemy keeps respawning and now suddenly they're immortal. That really should not be a massive issue. It's just going to improve the general flow of gameplay. Next up in terms of changes, items in inventory or the arsenal will no longer be reshuffling when you pick them up. And characters can no longer get pushed under the terrain. HQ tents will now contain medical boxes and kills will be showing up on the XP bar. Moving over to general server changes, server names will now be able to contain the number symbol and the GM will no longer be able to finish a scenario as doing so could result in an undefined server state. In regards to crashes, you will no longer crash when releasing radio frequencies and you will also not crash when if you're editing inside the Effusion engine and you select some incompatible material or accidentally spawn some certain particles. There's also some changes which should improve the performance on mobile devices such as laptops and the like. You're now going to get some better performance in the game. Vehicles were changed slightly to improve optimization. Um, empty vehicles will now be put in a reduced state when they are empty. They also fixed a bug that was causing flying vehicles, so no more flying vehicles. Finally, you'll be able to use the quick bar when in the passenger seat, and I think that's a really cool quality of life change. Moving to the UI and camera, there was a fix to a bug that prevented proper closing of the deploy menu whenever you deployed, and a realigning of the camera has occurred whenever you use weapons in tripods. In terms of gunplay, most changes to it this update were in regards to scopes and zeroing, with the M249, RPK-74, PKM, SVD, and M21 receiving some minor tweaking on their zeroing. And the M21, in addition to all of this, received an optics position changes. So really, using scopes and using iron sights should feel better, just overall following this update. To finalize, there is a no bug at this point that is kind of a byproduct of this update that they reported on in their post. The call sign locations are not going to be consistent for the entire team, and each player could have different call signs for the same location. So to avoid confusion, they advise using the town's actual name when giving out callouts as to where you are and that and the like. Personally, I've heard some really good things about this update since it came out on Xbox, and I've also heard some good things from my Steam friends as well. Hopefully you all have been enjoying it, but really this is all I've got for you guys today. This has been Christopher Beast, I hope you all enjoyed, and I hope to see you all next time.